So on the last video, I said it was one of my very, very favorite tasks where we were looking at multiplying numbers and, and using the same digits and moving them around and look how it changed, looked how it changed the product. Well, this is almost like part two of that. And we're gonna uncover this pattern, which I remember finding out myself only kind of recently. And I thought it, it's an amazing thing. It was a really surprising thing. Um, now afterwards, if you happen to find a really good way of explaining why that pattern exists, I'll be really, really interested to see how you show that and how you explain that. Uh, but we'll, uh, we're gonna get straight in. So I'm gonna look forward to seeing if you can spot that pattern, okay? So enjoy and we're gonna get going again. So last week we introduced this little idea, this little technique um, for making certain calculations more straightforward of doubling one number and halving the other. And I think that I said that my favourite example for this was 3.5 multiplied by 16, which initially looks quite difficult until you just double the 3.5 to 7, halve the 16 to 8, 7, 8, it must be 56. Now I just wanted to show you something that's similar, a similar kind of idea. Um, and it's just around the principle of manipulating numbers to make them easier to calculate with. Um, so it's not the same strategy, but it's the same principle. 8% of 25 pounds. Now that could seem like quite a difficult calculation. You know, I'd have to, maybe I'd think of, well, what's 5% of 25? And then, you know, quite a difficult calculation to do. Actually, if I can just manipulate that and understand that 8% of 25 pounds is the same as 25% of eight pounds, I know they give me the same answer. Well, you know, I don't find finding 25% of eight pounds that difficult at all in comparison. So I hope you're really buying into this idea of um, how we can manipulate numbers and that helps us to calculate. Now, to that end, I wanted to start with this example that was sent through from Neve. Uh, and again, it's using this wonderful rank by difficulty technique. So have a look at those questions. Think about which different strategies could be used. How would you rank these questions by difficulty? So again, you don't necessarily need to be able to answer all the questions to be able to order by difficulty. Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, now I can give you the answers. What I can't do is tell you how difficult or easy you found them, of course. Um, but the, the, I'm gonna tell you the order that I went for. I, for a lot of these questions, I used doubling and halving. So 4.5 multiplied by eight, I actually changed that to nine times four. So I probably found that one the easiest one. Um, then again, 35 times 12, I made 70 times six. I think I'd go for this one next. Uh, 18 times 50. Uh, became nine times a hundred. I didn't immediately see that strategy as clearly, but um, that for me was, was was the next one. Whereas 23 times 70, I couldn't see it as easy a way of manipulating the numbers around. So that was my order. Now have a look at these ones uh, from Bay. So again, love these examples. And these, th these gave me uh, quite a bit of thinking to do. So Pause the video and again, rank by difficulty. You don't have to be able to answer all the questions to say how you would order them from hardest to easiest. Which strategies apply to which questions? Okay, so let's have a look. I'm gonna um, have a look at some of these examples here. Now, I have to say the one that in the end I found was the easiest one was 25 times 24. Although at first I really just didn't see this strategy. But then I thought, well, double the 25, make it 50. So it's actually 50 times 12. Um, so actually, I, I found that one relatively easier in the end. 97 multiplied by 8. What I did is 100 times 8. So I saw that as a strategy straight away um, to make 800. And then I had to subtract three lots of 8, which is 24, and then actually perform that subtraction. So that was the one that I went for next. 34 subtract 28. I didn't see a strategy as easily there. I guess what you could do is 34 times 30 and subtract um, then two lots of 34. But, you know, I found that one a challenging one. Now, for today's activity, we're really building on um, one of the investigations we did on uh, last week, on Friday. Uh, it's called the Pattern of Squares, and I've got this amazing pattern to uncover. It was something when I found out about it, I was really, really surprised. And uh, I, I hope you'll have that same experience too. So, um, on the previous video, we had a look at this pattern. So we, so we looked at 80 multiplied by 54 and 84 multiplied by 50 and asked, will that give us the same product? Uh, will one be larger, one smaller? How would we know? How will the image change? 
So we went from 80 multiplied by 50 and said, how will each picture look different? And we saw that actually here, the, um, the example on the left is larger because we have um, 80 more lots of four when we do 80 multiplied by 54 rather than um, f four more lots of 50 uh, in the example on the right. So actually the example where the numbers were closer together, we actually ended up with a larger product. Um, now this principle we're going to explore in a slightly different way today. Um, now I want you to have a go at either the example on the left or the example on the right and we'll need to see both to draw out a pattern but for now you just do one of them. So I'm going to explain the example on the left, the example on the right is the same, the calculation might be slightly more difficult. Um, think of different pairs of numbers with a sum of 16. So 1 could be 10 and 6, the sum of 10 and 6 is 16. Um, and then multiply these numbers and what do you notice? So you need to come up with lots of different pairs of numbers with a sum of 16 or lots of different pairs of numbers with a sum of 20. Multiply all of them and then see what do you notice? So uh, pause the video and have a go at that. I wonder what you see. Okay, well let's, let's uncover um, what we could notice there. Um, so let's say here's um, pairs of numbers which with a sum of 16. Um, and I've multiplied them all um, and then on the right hand side I'm going to show you pairs of numbers there with a sum of 20 and again I've multiplied them all there. Um, now you can pause the video if you want a bit longer but let me give you a few seconds just to tell the screen what patterns do you notice here? What, what do you notice? Now a thing that immediately springs to my mind is as the numbers are closer together the product is larger and can you see as the numbers generally get slightly further apart from one another, 11 and 5 and then 12 and 4 even further apart, the product gets increasingly small. And you notice that on both of the examples. Now there's, there's something that is particularly unusual about this pattern if you look in real detail. Um, now what I want you to do is start with this top number here, so this square number here on your pattern. So it might be starting from 8 times 8 is 64 or on this example you might be starting from 100. And I want you to look at each of the products and subtract them from that top number. What do you notice about the pattern? So again, it could be if you're on this side, so there's 100, try subtract 99 from 100. What does that give you? Then subtract 96 from 100. What does that give? Um, pause the video and see if you can spot a pattern there. Well, I wonder if you noticed anything about the pattern that's created. Let's have a little look. Um, so 63 is 1 less than 64, 60 is 4 less, 55 is 9 less, 48 is 16 less, 39 is 25 less. And it's exactly the same on the right hand side example. 99 is 1 less than 100, 96 is 4 less than 100, 91 is 9 less than 100 and so on. The same pattern. Now do you notice anything about this particular pattern of numbers? They're all square numbers. Now have a look at this. 20 multiplied by 20. Now there's a way I can actually use that understanding and my knowledge of 20 multiplied by 20 to work out 21 times 19 and 22 times 18 and 23 times 17. Pause the video. See, what, what do you notice? What do you think you might spot? Can you predict the answers there? Which one will be larger by how much? Um, have a think. Tell the screen, write something down. Well, let's uncover this lovely little pattern. So 20 multiplied by 20 is 400. So here I'm going to make the, the this number one more and this one one less. And what would be fine? Not just the product smaller, but it's smaller by one. And then when I make that adjustment by two, the difference is four. That's 396 is four less. And we get this continued pattern reducing by a square number. 23 multiplied by 17, well that is 9 less than 20 times 20. Now that can actually help me to work out this calculation mentally because what I can do here for 34 multiplied by 26 is actually just convert and think well what is 30 times 30? That will be 900 and then I just need to think well how much less than 900 will 34 multiplied by 26 be? it will actually be 16 less. So 884.
Now for me, what an amazing pattern to find. So today's task, click on the blue link underneath the video from wherever you're watching it from and it'll bring open this document here. Um, so we've got task A, task B and an extend task. And now, of course, we've got this new powerful tool for um, for calculating with as well, potentially, if we can think if I can make, um, if I can adjust the calculation so it's one more and one less or two more and two less than a square number, I can I can work out the, the product. Um, we've been using a lot of different techniques over the last over the last few days and apply them here. So task A, here's a uh, one calculation. How can you use the one above to help you to work out the one below? So can you see a relationship between the facts? And all those relationships are different. And then there's a little investigation for you to have a go at here. So let me just read this one. I think of two numbers. When I add my numbers together, I get 15. When I multiply my numbers, I get more than 48. What could my numbers be? So for these tasks, how many possible answers are there? Now, of course, the answers themselves are at the bottom. For the extend task, can you design a question like that one or like the green one in the speech bubbles? But I want to know, you, I want to see your question if you manage to design it so you can have either three or four possible answers. So have a think, how do you need to select the numbers to generate either three or four possible answers? Um, so again, I hope you've really, really enjoyed the patterns that have been uncovered in today's video and the previous ones. And just like normal, I'm going to see you again tomorrow. Thanks so much for all your effort.